Hey there guys, welcome to my new walkthrough of the AQA June 2017 Foundation DCSC Maths Paper 1. I'm doing these again to do them better and to put them all in one place, which is a playlist you can get to down below in the description. Down there as well, I'll put lots of useful links um, to help with your GCSE maths in general, as well as topic playlists to help with this paper. Let's go. Okay, question one. How many minutes are there in three and a half hours? Okay, so one hour is 60 minutes. So three hours is 180 minutes. Half an hour is 30 minutes. So we need to do 180. Add 30. It's going to give us 210 minutes. So there's our going. Question 2. Work out 1 quarter at 0 0.5. So, all of our answers are decimals. So we need to turn this fraction into a decimal. So a quarter is 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 add 0 0.5 is 0 0.75. Cool. Question 3. Which of these shapes has the most sides? So we got a hexagon which has 6, octagon which has 8, rhombus which has 4, rhombus is a squat square, and trapezium also has 4. So, it's the octagon. Go. Cool. Question 4. Solve x minus 3 is equal to 0. Okay. So, what we need to do there is add the 3 to both sides. We get x is 3. Go. Cool. Question 5. Once says 2. Work out 58 times 73. So the method I recommend for this is the lattice. So we need a 2 by 2 square. 5, 8, 7, 3 diagonal lines up from left to right. Now each box is a multiplication between the thing at the top and the thing at the side. So 8 times 7, 56, 8 times 3 is 24. Uh, 5 times 7, 35, 5 times 3, 15. So what we do now is add up along the diagonals like that. So we start from the bottom right. So we got 4. Then we got 6, add 2, add 5, which is 13. So we put 3 there, carry the 1 up to the next diagonal. So now we got 1, add 5, add 5, add 1, which is 12. Put a 2 there, 
carry the one. One and three is four. So our answer is four thousand two hundred thirty four. So if you've never seen that method before, it's the one I recommend. It's called the lattice method. Cool. And question six. Five hundred people were asked if they drink coffee. Nine tenths said yes. Twenty percent of the people that said yes drink at least three cups each day. Part A wants us to complete this frequency true. Okay. So we got 500 people all together. We got the people who said yes, they need to go there. The people that said no, need to go there. So we know that nine tenths said yes. That means one tenth said no. So one tenth of 500 is 500 divided by 10 which is 50. So 50 people go there, which means then 450 people need to go there. Now we're told 20% of those people drink at least 3 cups a day. So now we need to find 20% of 450. So 10% is 45, so 20% is 90. So 90 goes there, and then we need to take 90 off of 450. Now that's going to give us 360. Nice way to do that, take away 100, so we get 350, but then add 10, so we get 360, there, cool, so there is our frequency true, part B says what fraction of the 500 people uh, drink at at least three cups of coffee each day. Give your answer in its simplest form. Okay, well we've just worked out that 90 people drink at least three cups. As a fraction, that's 90 out of 500, which has a common factor of 10, so it's 9 over 50. Cool. Okay, question 7. Uh, by rounding each number to the nearest 10, estimate... So we don't want the exact answer. We are estimating. Um, estimate the answer to 61 times 47 over 102. We must show our working. Okay, so 61 rounded to the nearest 10 is 60. 47 rounded to the nearest 10 is 50. 102 to the nearest 10 is 100. So, we now need to work that out. Now then, 60 times 50, well, let's do 10 times 50 first, which is 500, and then multiply that by 6, we get 3,000. So we've got 3,000 
over a hundred. Now both numbers end in two zeros, so we can cancel out two zeros on the top and bottom. So we get thirty over one, which is just thirty. Cool. Okay, in question eight, we got a nice six marker. So Nadia has five pound to buy pencils and rulers. Pencils cost eight p each. Rulers cost thirty p each. She says, "I will buy fifteen pencils. Then I will buy as many rulers as I can." Uh, with any change, I will buy more pencils. How many pencils and how many rulers can she buy? Six marks. Okay. So, let's start with her buying 15 pencils. So, 15 pencils. It's going to cost 15 times 8p. Now, let's split that up. Let's do 10p times, sorry, 10. 10 times 8p is 80p. And 5 times 8p is 40p. So, all together, fifteen times eight p costs one hundred and twenty p. Now, one hundred and twenty p is one pound twenty. So she spent one pound twenty on these pencils. Let's work out how much money she has left. So, five pound minus one pound twenty. Well, five pound take one pound is four pound. Four pounds minus 20p is £3.80. So she has £3.80 left. Okay, so now she's going to buy as many rulers as she can. So we need to know how many lots of 30 are in £3.80. So, if we think of £3.80, let's go down here. £3.80 is 380p. So we need to do 380 divided by 30. So, does 30 go into 3? Nope. Carry the 3 onto the 8. 30s into 38 go once. Remainder 8. 30s into 80 go twice. Which would be 60, and then there's going to be a remainder of 20p. So, she can get 12 rulers. So, Twelve rulers. So let's fill that in. Okay, 
Okay, now she's got 20p left. She can get two more pencils. For 16p. So altogether, she can get 17 pencils. Question 9, work out 25.68 divided by 12. Okay, bus stop. So, I know people don't like division, you are gonna need it in paper 1, so practice it. It's not even that hard. 25.68 divided by 12, I think it's just one of those things that gets taught really, really shit. So, 12's into 2, don't go, carry the 2, 12's into 25, go twice, with a remainder of 1. Now don't forget the decimal on top, 2, so then 12's into 16, go once, remainder 4. 12 and 48 go 4 times. So the answer is 2.14. Cool. Question 10. 1 says 2. Work out 3 eighths times 11. Giving your answer as a mixed number. Okay, so if you multiply a fraction by a whole number, you just multiply the top by the whole number. So, this is going to give us 3 times 11 over 8, which is 33 over 8. So, that is an improper fraction, we now need a mixed number. So to do that, we need to think of the biggest number, less than 33, that 8 goes into, which is 32. So we can say, this is 32, it's add 1 8th. Now 32 divided by 8 is 4, so we get 4 and 1 eighth. Cool. Okay, question 11. A triangle has perimeter 32 centimetres. Square has perimeter 40 centimetres. Uh, Two sides of the shapes are put together to make a pentagon. We are asked for four marks to work out the perimeter of the pentagon. Okay. So, perimeter is distance around the outside. Now, because we know the square has a perimeter of 40, every side of a square is the same. So, to work out the side of a square, or this square, we're going to do 40 centimetres divided by 4, which is 10 centimetres. So, that tells us 3 of the 5 sides. Now we just need to get a bit clever for the triangle. So we know because the triangle sits exactly on top of the square, that this length is 
10 centimeters. So, we don't know if this triangle is isosceles, we know it can't be equilateral because 3 times 10 is not 32. What we do know is if we call this side A and this side B, well we know that length of A add the length of B add 10 centimetres add B 32. So that tells us then that A add B is 22 centimetres. So on our pentagon the perimeter is 3 times 10 add A add B which is 30 centimetres add 22 centimetres which is 52 centimetres cool ok question 12 on for you football fans so a football team has P points P is 3W add D where W is the number of wins D is the number of draws. A team has six wins and two draws. Work out their number of points. Okay, so we're saying W is equal to six, D is equal to two. So P is equal to three times six add two which is eighteen add two which is twenty cool okay then we're told after thirty three games a different team has fifty three points so that's telling us P is fifty three 11 games are draws, so D is equal to 11. How many games has the team lost? Okay, so we know that they played um, 33 games overall. We know that they have drawn 11. So, we also know that they have 53 points. So we're going to substitute these numbers into P is 3W add D. Work out the number that they won. And then we can work out the number that they lost. So we know 53 is 3W add 11. Now if we take away the 11, 42 is equal to 3 W. Now that means 3 times W. So we need to divide both sides by 3. Now 42 divided by 3, 3 and 4 goes once. One remainder, 3 into 12 goes 4. So it's 14. So we get 14 is W. So they've won 14 games. Now we know they've also drawn 11 games. So 14 and 11 is 25. So the number that they've lost is 33 minus 
25, which is 8. Cool. Okay, question 13. 2 add 0 add 1 add 7 is equal to 10. We want to make the following calculations correct using only plus, minus, times, divide, and brackets. So, first up, we want to make minus 4. So, how are we going to do this? Well, 2 add 1 is 3. Minus 7 is minus 4. So, if we put plus, plus, minus, then we got it. Second one, we want to make 0. So, anything times 0 is 0. So, let's just go times, 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 done. Okay, then we want to make 2 to the power of 4. So, 2 to the power of 4 means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. So, this one's pretty tricky. So, we got a 2, and we got a 1 and a 7. Now, 2 into 16 goes 8 times. So, if we got a 2 and we can make an 8, we're then going to want to do a multiplication. Now we're going to need brackets. So, if we put a plus between 2 and 0, we get 2. So if we put brackets around that, we got 2. Then if we do 1 add 7, we get 8. Stick brackets around that, we got 2 and then 8. Whack times in the middle, and we're there. Cool. Okay, question 14. A number is picked at random from the first four prime numbers. A number is picked at random from the first four square numbers. The two numbers are added together to get a score. Part A answers to complete the table for four marks. So, across the top we got our square numbers, so we got one missing. So squares are one times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine. The missing one, four times four, is sixteen. And down the side, we got our primes. So, primes are numbers only divisible by 1 and themselves. So we got 2, 3, and then the missing one is 5. Okay, so now we're just going through the table. Adding the numbers together. So, 2 add 1 is 3, 6. 11, 18, 3 add 1 is 4, 7, uh, 19, 5 add 1 is 6, 5 add 4 is 9, 14, 21, 7 add 1 is 8, 11, 16, 23. Cool. Part B asks us what is the probability of a score is a prime number. Okay, so there are 16 possible scores. So the bottom of our fraction is 16. And now we need to find how many primes are up. So, we've got 3, 11, 7, 
19, 23, and 11. So, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 6 out of 16, which we could write as 3 over it. Okay, question 15, nice bit of ratio. So, in a school show, the ratio of girls to boys is 1 to 1. That means same number of girls and boys. And the girls who sing to girls who do not sing is 1 to 2. Uh, 8 girls sing in the show. How many students are in the show all together? Okay. So, for the girls, sing to not sing is uh, one, two, two. Now we know that eight girls sing. So, how do we turn one? into 8. We times it by 8. So to find the number that don't sing, we multiply that by 8. And we get 16. So the number of girls all together is 8 add 16 is 24. So the total is 24 girls and 24 boys is 48. Cool. Next up, uh, P and Q are points on the line. 3x add 2y is equal to 6. Complete the coordinates of P and Q. So, at P, we know x is 0. So, at p, when x is 0, so we substitute that into the equation. So, 3 times 0 is 0. So, we get 0 add 2y is equal to 6, so that just means 2y is equal to 6, divided by 2y is equal to 3. So the y coordinate is 3. Now at q, we know that y is 0. So at Q, when Y is 0, so now we're substituting in Y equals 0 into this. Well, it's going to leave us with 3X is equal to 6. Divide by 3X is equal to 2. Okay, then for part B, we want to draw the line 3x and 2y equals 6 for values of x from minus 3 to 3. Okay, so we've got these two coordinate points. So q is 2, 0. So that means 2 along and 0 up. Point P has coordinates 0, 3. So that means 0 along and 3 up. So what we do now is 
using a ruler, join these two points together and draw the line all the way through the grid. So we're going to get it probably isn't going to go very well. Something like that. When you're doing it really, use a ruler. Make sure the line goes all the way through the grid. Cool. Okay, question 17 answers to circle the expression that does not simplify to y cubed. Okay, so y times y times y does y to the power of 4 divided by y, or remember, that would mean y to the 4 divided by y to the 1, which is y to the 4 minus 1, which is indeed y to the power of 3. y squared times y is y squared times y to the 1, which is y to the power 2 add 1, which is y to the 3. So, it must be this guy. Now that would be y to the power 6 minus 2, which would be y to the power 4. So this is our guy. Okay, number 18. <coughs> Uh, write the number 6,500,000 in standard form. Okay, so 6 million is 6 with 6 zeros. Now the 5,000 you would go here, so we get 5,200 now, so 6 million 5,200 is 6 zero, zero, five, two, zero, zero. Now, standard form means a single digit out the front, so we're going to have 6 point now we're going to need zero, zero, five, two times ten to a certain power. Now to get the power, we count how many places with the decimal move to get from here to here. So, it's gone. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's times ten to the power six. Cool. Okay, question nineteen. We got unit conversion. So use eight kilometers per hour is five miles per hour to convert ninety-six kilometers per hour to miles per hour. Okay, so if we know that 8 kilometers per hour is equal to 5 miles per hour, we need to work out how many lots of 8 are in 96. So Bus stop again. So useful for paper one. So eight into nine goes once. Remainder one. Eight to sixteen goes twice. So what we are doing is multiplying eight by twelve. So we're going to do that to five miles per hour. 
5 times 12 is 16. Cool. Okay, then part B. So this is the first question that's also on the higher paper. Uh, and with all the people that I've done this paper with, higher foundation, no one can do this question. It's horrible. So, x kilometers per hour is y miles per hour. If we want to use 8 kilometers per hour is 5 miles per hour. To write a formula for y in terms of x. So that means we want to get y is equal to something to do with x. So, what we're going to say then is that x is equal to 8 and y is equal to 5. And then, y over x is 5 over 8. Now, x is on the bottom of that fraction, which means y divided by x. To cancel out a division, we do a multiplication. So we get y is equal to 5 eighths times x. Go. Cool. In question 20, we have a circle in the side of a square. We are told the area of the square is 64 centimetres squared. Work out the area of the circle. Give your answer in terms of pi. Okay, so area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Now we need then to work out the radius of the circle. Now the radius of the circle is half the side length of the square. So the radius is from the centre of the circle to the circumference. Now, with the square, we know the area is 64 centimetres squared. With a square, sides of the same length, let's call it x. So we know that x times x, x squared, is equal to 64. So if we square root, x is equal to 8 centimetres. That tells us then the radius of the circle is 4 centimetres. So the area of the circle is pi times 4 squared centimetres squared, which is 16 pi centimetres squared. Cool. Question 21, 5 marks. Billy wants to buy these tickets for a show. 4 adult tickets, £15 each. 2 giant tickets, £10 each. A 10% booking fee is added to the ticket cost. 3% is then added for paying by credit card. We want to work out the total cost for the tickets when you pay by credit card. Okay. So, first thing we need to work out is the cost of the tickets. So, that's 4 times 15 pounds and 2 times 10 pounds. So, 4 times 15 is 60. 
two times ten is twenty. So all together, tickets cost eighty quid. Okay, now the booking fee. is 10% of 80 so 10% of 80 is 80 divided by 10 which is 8 so the tickets add the booking fee cost eighty eight pounds. Now it's then on that that the three percent is charged. So we need to find one percent of eighty eight pounds. Now, to find 1%, you divide by 100. When you divide by 100, the decimal point goes two places left. So that's going to be 0.88 pounds, 88p. So 3% is 3 times 88 P. Okay, so three times eighty P is two pound forty. Three times eight P is 24p so the three percent is two pound 64p so the total is 88 pounds add two pound 64 which is 90 pounds 64 Cool. Okay, 22. Density is mass divided by volume. The mass of solid A is 6 times the mass of solid B. The volume of solid A is 3 times the volume of solid B. Complete the sentence. The density of solid A is something times the density of solid B. So, let's say, to choose nice numbers, let's say the mass of B is 1 and volume of B is 1. And then volume of Sorry, mass of A is 6. Volume of A is uh, 3. So, the density of A would be 6 over 3, which would be 2. So, it's the density of A is 2 times the density of B. Okay, then we're told average speed is distance over time. If the distance is halved and the time is doubled, what happens to the average speed? Okay, so, again, let's choose nice numbers. So let's say distance 
is originally, I don't know, eight. And time is two. So at the moment, speed would be eight over two, which is four. Now, if we uh, half the distance, then we get four, double the time, we get four. So, speed is now going to be four over four, which is one. So, it's gone from four to one. So it's divided by four. Cool. Okay, 23. A regular polygon has an exterior angle of 20 degrees. We want to work out the number of sides of the polygon. So, exterior angles with a sum of exterior angles is always 360 degrees. Now, in a regular polygon, they're all the same. So, for 20 degrees, we do 360 divided by 20 is the same as 36 divided by 2, which is 18. So there are 18 sides. Okay, question 24, we got the ratio. 1 half to 2 thirds is x to 1. We want to find the value of x. So, we want to make the right hand side 1. So, if we first of all, multiply both parts of the ratio by 3, we get 3 halves to 2, and then to turn 2 into 1, we divide by 2, so we're going to get 3 quarters to 1, x is 3 quarters. Twenty-five. We have a funny one. So the table shows information about the times taken by ten people to complete a task. So one person took between zero and twenty minutes. Six took between twenty and forty, and three took between forty and sixty. We want to. Now oh, these statements are about the mean and range of the actual times tick the correct box for each statement okay so the mean can be less than 20 minutes so mean remember is when you add everything together and divide by how many there are so only one person took either less than or equal to 20 minutes. So that means nine people took more than 20 minutes. There is no way the mean is less than 20. So that's false. The mean could be more than 40. Okay, so the longest time everyone can take in the third row is 60 minutes. If everyone in the second row took 40 minutes and the one in the first row took 20, that would give us a mean greater than 40. So that's true. Third one. Uh, the mean can be less than 40, so 
shortest time taken by the bloke in the top one could be one minute. Shortest time taken by the six in the middle it would be 21 minutes. Shortest time for the guys in the third one would be 41 minutes. If that was the case, what I mean would be less than 40. So that's true. Okay, now we're talking about the range. So the range could be more than 40. Well, range is longest take shortest. Longest possible time is 60. Shortest possible time is 1. That gives us the greatest range of 59. So that's true. The range can be less than 40. Well, shortest time taken in the third row could be 41. Longest time taken in the first row could be 20. 41, take 20, it's 21. That's true. Then the last one, the range could be more than 60. Not true. We know the longest time taken is, or could be, 60. Shortest time could be 1. Greatest range is 59. So, false. 26. Right, 36 as a product of its prime factors, giving our answer in index form. So this is when we get Fact trees on the go. So we could say that 36 is 6 times 6. Neither one of those is prime. 6 is 2, which is prime, times 3. So we could say 36 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. What I mean by index form is to write this as 2 squared times 3 squared. Cool. 27 wants us to circle the value of cos of 90. So at foundation there's really no reason why you should know this. It's as it goes, zero. But I wouldn't worry about it too much. Okay, final question, we got simultaneous equations. So we've got plenty of stuff on these, which I'll link down below. So, first thing is to label them one and two. Now, the idea is that we need two equations with the same amount of the same letter, which we actually have already. Both of them have one y. Now, because one of them is positive and one of them is negative, to cancel out the y's, we need to add the equations together. So, Equation 1 add 2 would give us 2x add x is 3x, y add minus y is 0, and 18 add 6 is 24. So x is 24, divided by 3x is 8. Now to find y, we substitute in our value for x. So let's go in the top one. So 2x add y is 18. 2 times 8 is 16. And y is 18. Minus 16, y is 
to so we've done it excellent y is two that's it for this paper don't forget you can get to every foundation paper walkthrough from the playlist down below i hope this has helped take it easy take care